you guys for having me. Uh, I think this is probably my first event of 2024. I uh, had several, I've had a couple of them that actually got rescheduled. So I think that you guys are actually my first uh, official talk here of, of this, uh, of 2024. So I'm, I'm excited to kick it off with you guys. Um, but uh, today I'm going to be talking <clears throat> About something that's one of my favorite things to talk about, which is something called component testing. Um, many of you uh, may not be familiar with what that is or who who Cypress is or anything like that. And I hope to answer a lot of those questions for you today. Um, so let me get started. So uh, first, let me start with uh, my least favorite topic, which is talking about myself. But I think it's always important to understand Who's the stranger behind uh, the camera that's talking? Uh, why you should care about what I have to say, or maybe you don't care about what I have to say. But uh, anyways, I'm Jordan Powell. I'm a developer experience engineer at Cypress. And if you want to follow me on LinkedIn, um, feel free to do so. Or you can follow me on X um, at Jordan Powell 88. That's how you can reach out to me. Uh, <clears throat> today, it's going to be kind of separated into a few parts, the agenda, a quick intro, and then we're going to talk about, because we're talking about component testing, we're going to focus on really the fundamentals of components, kind of dive into them from a deep, uh, a deep perspective, um, which will sort of help us understand why component testing is valuable, do a quick demo, and then answer any questions that you guys have. Um, but first, um, for the, any of you who don't know what Cypress is, uh, we are a uh, a tool for testing your software. And we recently, last year actually, it's been a little bit, but we surpassed 5 million downloads on NPM a week. It's an open source tool. Like I said, uh, we're over 20, 20 to 25 million downloads of, of Cypress every single month, which is uh really amazing to see how how much it's grown over the last you know eight years and um yeah it's it's amazing to work on a project that is it's used by people all over the world it's pretty cool um what's different about cypress compared to other testing tools um, i'm not going to read through all these things but um basically there's a lot of really cool features that are packed into cypress um that you get sort of out of the box for free we support, uh, it's a browser-based testing tool, so we support all the major uh, browsers. Um, we have first-class support for end-to-end -end testing, which is the thing that many of you have probably, if you've used Cypress before, you've probably done mostly this type of testing. But back in 2021, 20, uh, we released something called component testing, which my team uh, here at, uh, at Cypress, we, we built. And this is the thing that I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, subjects to talk about, and I really love this type of testing. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what type of testing you want to call it or the, the approach you want to take. At the end of the day, if you can run something in a browser, Cypress can test it. Okay, so we talked about, before we get into component testing, let's first think about like what is a component. I know... We think it's, you know, pretty probably straightforward, but uh, when we say what is a component, many of us have heard, have heard, have looked at or are familiar with this testing pyramid um, where you have end-to-end -end testing, you have integration testing and unit testing. But the reality is, is like, where does a component fit into this paradigm, right? Because most of you who are doing front-end development you are using components to build your applications. Uh, probably like it's a big percentage of your applications. So like, how do we actually go about testing the those then? Well, traditionally we'd use something like a unit test, but the problem is with that is like, if we look at what a component actually is, uh, let's look at, let's think of a component as everything inside of this 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 box. A uh, component has, depending on the framework, you may use classes or if you're, if you're like Angular or Vue or something, or you may use, if you're using like JSX or something, you have like a, a function. But the the concept of some sort of JavaScript class uh, or a function that has the logic that 
your component um, is comprised of. It also has HTML that it will eventually interact with. Uh, it'll have bindings that binds values to the HTML. Uh, oftentimes your components have services, hooks, or other sort of outside dependencies that it consumes in order to uh, basically do the things that the component is supposed to do. And then in many cases, those components have children components that then have children components and so on and so forth. And so though components, we think of them as a very small, uh, very small minor piece, they're actually much more complex when we really uh, do a deeper dive into them. And like I said, traditionally, we would unit test maybe public methods or functions of our of our component. Um, but the problem is, is then we'd have to stub out the integration between our JavaScript and our HTML. Uh, we would stub out our, our services and hooks. Uh, we would basically say, I don't care about these children components. We're going to stub those out. And then you're like, we're going to rely upon something like end-to-end -end test to sort of validate everything works all together. But then you end up having a too many end-to-end -end tests. And then sometimes our our workflow of running tests can become super slow. But like, let's look at even simpler example of a component, like a, a dumb component or uh, something like a presentation component. So even a component that doesn't really have any JavaScript logic, um, it still has a class, even though it's pretty much does, it doesn't really do much. Uh, or or anything, it has HTML. It also has CSS, which we didn't even talk about in the previous example. Um, and so we could create some unit test that validates that it can cr like create a new instance of this component, but you still have this integration uh, with the HTML. Um, it pr most likely it takes props that then get bind binded to the HTML. You have integration of CSS. How does the styles affect uh, the HTML? Uh, and again, like how do you reliably test this? And again, you could kind of do it with you could do it with end to end testing, but there are some problems with that. So uh, one of the things that uh, this is uh, something that I like to think about, um, and this is not like an official uh, what what we, what we say or anything at Cypress, but this is just Jordan Powell's the way I like to look at testing. I think the new testing pyramid looks more like this, where we have like where we do a lot of end-to-end -end testing, but we have but we want to test our components and using component testing. Well, and which I'm getting ready to talk about that more in depth. Uh, uh, you can use API testing, which um, you could use Cypress or some other form of basically testing your APIs, the things that your uh, your applications consume. You can do this in Cypress. I'm not going to be able to go into this today um, or end to end for that matter, but the most thing, the most important thing is, is before in the testing pyramid, you had very uh, clear boundaries that defined uh, the types of tests you would use and what types of things you would test in those inside of those boundaries. I think that in today's world, uh, the boundaries are much blur, much uh, more blurred, and I think that there's a lot of overlap between the types of things that you would test. Um, some things that you would make that, that you could test with an end-to-end -end test, you may say, I, I I would rather put it in a component test, or vice versa. Same thing with API, exact uh, same. And you'll notice um, I didn't put unit testing here. The thing I found is that uh, really unit tests provide the least amount of value of any type of test, uh, and it doesn't mean you'll completely remove those things that are pure functions. Um, maybe if you have like a reducer, if you're using Redux or something like that, some type of business logic, or like I said, any type of thing that's uh, business logic and um, that, you know, you would want to have a unit test for, you'd still have those things. But at the end of the day, um, uh, you know, our applications are comprised of components. And so I found that I am using less and less unit tests, the more and more I develop um, a right software these days. Uh, so the idea is instead of thinking about how, like, instead of doing testing the way we would always do this before, where we'd have a component, uh, let's take that component and let's put it inside of a browser and test it. So it looks not like this, but we don't see the actual implementation of the component, but we see what a user sees. And that's what's, uh, I believe way more valuable of a, of a, 
um, of uh, use case, and I'll go into that more detail. But I like to say uh, Cypress component testing is like Jest or Karma, or some type of uh, name your favorite unit testing uh, testing tool. And um, Jess or Storybook, if like either one of them, if they had a baby together, it would sort of be component, uh, Cypress component testing. Uh, and the reason why is that, uh, and this is a spicy take, but basically, uh, ah, excuse me, the DOM is the only interface that matters. So, um, or, I, you know, I could say not the only, but it's the one that matters the most, in my opinion, because the DOM is the thing that your users use when they interact with your website. They don't, your users don't care if you're using Angular, if you're using React, if you're using uh, one type of state management over another state management. They don't care if you're using Tailwind, or Bootstrap, or vanilla JavaScript. They don't care really about any of those details. The only thing your users really care about is that they can interact with your website and do the things that they want to do quickly and efficiently. And that's why testing the same way your users use your applications is so important. Okay, so now that we know a little bit more about components, let's look about why we should look at component testing. So I, one of the things I love about component testing is even at Cypress, we have component tests for many of the parts of Cypress itself. And uh, Cypress is a very complicated project. And oftentimes when I go and work on a new part, I don't really know what that part of the code uh, does. And there'll be components that I open that I've never touched before and, they're, and they can be complicated. Well, the great thing is that component testing provides really great documentation for your components. When you have good, when you have a thorough tests for all the use cases, the states and interactions that a user will have with your component, it then provides documentation so that future Jordan or someone else on my team can look and say, okay, this component does this, 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 and this, and feel confident knowing that if I add additional features or change behavior, that not only am I uh, creating the, the new intended behavior, but I'm also making sure I'm not breaking existing behavior. So the other great thing is it provides isolation. It's, a, it's such an easy way to write tests that let you focus on the thing that you that you actually care about, which is just this component. You don't have to start up a server, run your application, navigate to something to then write a test for it. You can just isolate and mount this one com component in the browser and and work on it this way. It's also a great way to actually build your components, by the way. Uh, it also provides a great uh, improved user experience because the more you can write... Uh, better components that are tested and, and you catch all the use cases and provide the right uh, functionality before you ship it, that's always going to lead to uh, an improved user experience. And at the end of the day, confidence, right? Because confidence is why we write tests. When we, when we ship code that's used by millions of people, we want to make sure that we feel confident that it's actually doing what we expect it to do. So how do... How have we traditionally tested components, right? So this is how we've sort of thought about these things um, sort of uh, traditionally. And so what I've mostly done, I've seen is that basically we take a component and it would have uh, either public methods or maybe functions inside of the component that we would then write unit tests for. And then we would basically, that component would then get compiled into a DOM and then you would say, do I have confidence in this, right? And we would we would say yes. And there's lots of instances that this is is um, can be sufficient, but I've found that they become more brittle over time. And um, there's just it doesn't provide you the the full context that you can that you'd love to have when you're writing tests for a component. So, and this is sort of the output you get. You don't get a great. Uh, insight into what exactly is happening. You just get a green dot in either a browser or uh, your terminal. But and this is sort of how we th think about it here at Cypress, which is you could take that same component and let's take it and let's put it inside of the DOM itself. And then let's test the DOM. And this gives us much more confidence knowing that uh, the 
the translation from the public parts of the of the component um, actually work when they actually represent the DOM, which is how your users are going to interact with it. Because at the end of the day, your users don't care about the public uh, th parts of your of your component class or or something like that. They just care about how they're actually going to uh, how that component actually works in the real in the real world. And this is sort of the output you get. Again, it's like it's in a browser. You can see it. You can interact with. It, you can click on it. You can do all the things that you normally do. You can inspect it, see the colors, see the network tab, see the uh, console logs, all of the things that you would normally do in a browser. You get this experience inside of Cypress Component Testing, which is one of the reasons why I love why I love it, and I think it's such a great tool. Okay, so let's shift gears here for a second. So let's look. Let's think about what this means from a real life example. Uh, let's look at the example of a car, right? How would we go about testing a car? Because if you're like me, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to drive a car or, or I'll say I wouldn't put my wife or my kids in a car that I, that hasn't been thoroughly tested. I want to make sure it's very, very safe. So one thing I'd want to do is I would want to drive the car, right? I would want to make sure that when I drive it, it drives good. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, that when I press the brakes, it stops, that it goes the right speed, the steering works, all the parts that you love about a car, uh, maybe the air conditioning, the heating, all those things that they work the way you expected, right? That's an important element, right? The car also has lots of different components or parts, right? And those things you would want to make sure are tested. Maybe you'd have a mechanic look at them and say, oh, the engine looks good. The transmission maybe needs to be flushed, whatever it is. Again, I'm not a car guy, but you you kind of get the analogy of maybe you say, okay, uh, it, it needs new tires. Well, that would be a type of test a mechanic would run and say, yes, this part of the car uh, needs to be changed out. Um, your car also takes gas. Uh, you would also want to make sure that uh, the gas company that you're getting gas from is is getting the right kind of gas, right? Um, and th this doesn't apply, obviously, to an electric vehicle, but you guys understand the analogy. You would want to make sure that when you put in uh, unleaded gasoline, maybe type 87, you would want to make sure it's not putting in diesel fuel because that would be bad for your engine. And then finally, your car has lots of little tiny little parts, right? Maybe nuts and bolts that hold together your engine or various other parts of your car. But those tiny little units or parts, those are the things that you would want to make sure are not rusty or breaking as well. So again, let's think about how we would test those parts uh, if it, in a real life example with something like Cypress, right? This is kind of what I, I want to do. So Let's think about, we talked about has lots of components. Uh, we have gasoline. We want to test that it drives correctly and that it has all the parts necessary. Uh, those parts are, are, are solid. Okay. So let's look at an example of what happens if the radiator goes out on your car. Hopefully you guys are familiar with the radiator, but it's the part that cools your engine. So how would we test a radiator uh, before we put it into a car, right? So we could we we could have a bad radiator and we could put it in a car. Um, but we would want to make sure that the radiator that we that we bought and put in the car worked before you put it in. You wouldn't want to put a bad part into into your vehicle. So how would we go about testing this, right? Well, you could test the individual nuts and bolts but you would want to make sure that those parts work together before they were before it was actually put into your engine because your car still looks like a car you could end to end you could drive the car you could end to end test it is sort of the analogy you could drive it in fact even if your radiator is bad your car would still drive for a while <clears throat> because your engine wouldn't get too hot but the longer you drove your car the, if the if the radiator was bad, it would eventually go, uh, it would eventually go bad. But see, that would be something you maybe wouldn't test. You wouldn't catch in an initial drive of a car. So this is why something like component testing is super valuable. Same thing with like uh, the gas of your car. Like, how would we go about testing that? Because again, we want to make sure we're not putting 
the wrong type of gas or there's not bad parts, bad things in the gas, right? Uh, because whether it's good gas, bad gas, uh, your car still looks like a car. And in fact, you may be able to put uh, maybe diesel fuel into a gas car and it may be dry for a little bit, same in algae, but wouldn't drive very far very well. So we need a good way to test that. Uh, and so the idea here is that, again, we have all these, these four different kind of parts of a car and we'd wanna be able to make sure that we test this correctly. So the, the, the radiators, the wheels, the components that make up our car, um, those are the things that we would wanna use something like component testing for. Uh, those are the components of our car they, that have uh, specific roles in, in, so that way when they come together, it makes up a car and does car things, right? You'd wanna, an API test would be like how you would test the, the gasoline, it's the dependencies that your car needs to to drive and to go and do what it what it needs to do. And you would want to do a full drive, which a uh, test drive, and this would be an end-to-end -end test. You would want to make sure that, again, uh, you wouldn't want to just rely upon a component test that says uh, the radiator works fine, the wheel works fine, the, the engine works fine. You would want to make sure that the mechanic that put them all all those pieces together inside the car didn't miss any any specific little thing or something like that so that way when you drive it it all those parts and pieces play together well and there may be a few remaining gaps or things where you would want to use like a a, a unit test to test individual parts right so uh, again this is just a, a fun example to kind of demonstrate um, the way I like to think about why component testing is important but at the end of the day it's not you when it comes to testing it's not important what you're testing as much as um it's more important do you feel safe do you feel comfortable putting your wife and kids in that car do you feel comfortable shipping that 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 bug fix to production do you feel comfortable uh delivering that new product to your customers all those types of things so then they, that's the that's the point of testing, right? That it's uh, to improve your app quality and feel confident that you're delivering what you expect to deliver. So what component testing looks like across frameworks, uh, we have support for React, Angular, Vue, Svelte, and we also have a uh, community, uh, basically a, an adapter where community plugins um, frameworks and so forth can build plugins for their framework. So we have community plugins for, um, for uh, um, Quick, SolidJS, Stencil, many other uh, frameworks. So uh, if you have, if you happen to use a, something that isn't one of the the main, the big three or four frameworks, don't worry, you have option as, for that as well. But the other thing that I really love is that writing tests this way is like significantly easier than writing uh writing like a, a unit test or something. You because you don't have to stub out things, you use the actual component itself. You don't have to stub out dependencies, um, things like that. So again, you just use a new command that comes with Cypress called mount, and you in React you just use the JSX and um in Angular Vue, you would just use the class, uh, the class name. Um, you can also, in Vue, if you're using JSX or TSX, you can also use that as well here. So, but you kind of get the idea of how, sort of how this works. Um, but let's let's do a demo. Let me kind of show you how this works. Let's see if there are. There you go. Ronald's got the something going on. He he shared a link to some of our plugins. Let's see. Let me go ahead and show you how this works. So let me do share my portion of my screen here and I'll close this out. Oops. And let me, let's look at, uh, let's create a, um, a re, uh, React, a brand new React app to show you how easy it is to get started with this. So let's call this, uh, we're calling it a CRA example. Hopefully you guys can see this. Take just a second. 
and I and I wanted to just uh, again um, sh do this exercise so you can see how easy it is it is to get started, and then I'll show you um, an example of of an application that's using uh, component testing, so you can see how easy that is. So let's go into our example app, and I'm going to install the latest version of Cypress in that project. And then I'm going to run MPX Cypress open. This will now launch Cypress. And neither end-to-end -end or component tests have been configured. In this case, we're gonna pick component testing. It's automatically, or I should say it, Cypress is automatically going to detect that we're using Create React App. Um, we click next, it's then going to check all of our dependencies in our application to make sure uh, we have all the dependencies needed and we have the right versions. Again, out of the box here, this works just fine. It's gonna scaffold some configuration files. Uh, you can uh, expand these to see specifically what they're doing and then press continue. And here, it's going to tell us which browser do we wanna run this in. Uh, I'm just gonna use Electron for the sake of this example. and. Here we go, we, we have Cypress component testing configured, but we don't have any tests written. One of the cool things is uh, we have something called create come from, from component. And what we can do is actually find, it'll we'll look at all the components that our application has and we can go ahead and create a test for it. It's gonna say, hey, uh, I'm gonna do this, go ahead. Do I wanna create another spec or run it? Let's go ahead and run it. And you'll see here, here's the default create React app that you guys are used to seeing. Um, but it's mounted directly in our application. We didn't have to um, we didn't have to uh, start our server or anything like that. It's just working, right? The other cool thing is you can see it running. We can then inspect it. You could see all the parts of your uh, this is just as a browser. This is exactly what you're used to seeing. Console logs, uh, your source network controls, all these types of things you you have access to inside of here. You could change colors to red you know all these types of things you can do in real time which is really really cool and i, I think just much more valuable than an actual uh like a unit test so so there's this example let me show you now a more real life example um of a this is a react app as well that is using um Vite, i believe let's open this Let's use Chrome this time, just so you can see it working in different browsers. Uh, if I had Firefox or something open, it would it would detect that. I don't think I have Firefox installed on this computer, which is why. Um, but let's look at something super small. So we have a button component. Well, our application uses different buttons, right? And we can see we have different tests for different states. Um, and we we basically just have a basic test for this it says it should mount and we have a test that says when the button is clicked it should call a, an on click handler that basically is a callback function to the parent and we basically validate that it was when you click it, it that we spy on that that function and make sure that it made that call the other cool thing is here we could just go ahead and open this in our ide and we can see this this what this test looks like so here like you said we're just passing um we're passing this right, uh, we're the JSX into our mount function. We can also change this in real time and say, hey, I'm gonna change this to submit. Let's go back here. And now our test is gonna fail because it's expecting that button to say, click me. We can then say, okay, let's change this to submit and let's make sure that it's been called. And there you go. We get super fast uh, feedback um, on this. And again, this is like a, a this is what I like is you can very easily do very, very small focus tests, or you could do something. Um, let's open this up. We can do something more high level, like uh, let's say uh, a welcome form, or let's do actually this login form is probably a great example. So this looks like an application running and like almost like an end to end test, but it's not. It's actually just, um, just running this login form component. And you'll see uh, there's lots of different validations along the way too. So let's look at like, for example, uh, this test right here. So we can also go back in time and we can see different states. So when we click this, 
when we basically click this, the login button on our test, we want to make sure that the required inputs have been entered. And if not, we want to make sure that the expected validation error displays. That's what this test validates. Um, again, we can open this in our IDE. You can see that these tests are very easy to write. Um, we are, before each one, we're mounting them. And then we, we're doing just different validations. This is this is kind of how, uh, like I said, this works in Cypress. Uh, and then let's do one other example of uh, a higher level test, which will be the, our app level that has uh, makes calls to a service. And so here we see two examples. Uh, one, it redirects to a welcome screen. So in this application, when you log in successfully, it will then take the name of the, the, the username and password that you type in and it will welcome them. It's like a common thing you would have in an application. And then in this example, if the login fails, we want to basically display something that says like, hey, there was a bad username or password, something like that. And this is all comes from the callback from that input form or the that form we were just referencing. So if I open this in our IDE, I'll see that, um, be, that, that this component depends upon, has a dependency on uh, the an HTTP request coming in from an API. But with Cypress, what we can use is something called CIDA intercept, which will basically, it's it's a proxy that lives in the network layer that is basically intercepts or catches uh, certain requests. So we can, in this case, say, this component makes a POST request to the auth endpoint. And instead of actually passing that request to, to the through to the uh, actual API, I want to intercept this. And I just want to return a... a a 200 and I'm just gonna pass a message back that says, hey, this is authenticated. So when our application gets a 200 back, it's going to say, okay, it's good, right? It doesn't it doesn't know whether it was intercepted or not because it, it thinks it was actually authenticated. And the nice part about this is we didn't have to create a uh, a mock service that, that does this for us. This is just uh, basically mocking at the network level, which is a, is less intrusive and actually the benefit is you're you're not sort of hacking your code to get this behavior to work. You're using the actual production code and services and things like that and just intercepting in the network layer. And then finally, uh, we could do the same thing, uh, but in this case, we're gonna pass a, 501, uh, a 401 back. And then you, you notice that the test said a uh, bad username or password. Well, this is the message that comes back from from this um, API. So if I change this to bad username, so now it's gonna say bad username, but our our test is validating that we should, it should say bad username and password. So if we then change this back and save it, we now get a passing test. So again, this is kind of the example of um, kind of how you can um, do all the various states of this. And the nice thing is, um, when you go in and look at these these examples, it, it gives really clear documentation, I believe, and, and how to do this. And I think you'll find writing tests for this is great. Um, I am right around 40 minutes here, so I will pause. Um, I have uh, uh, any questions that anyone has, I'd be happy to answer those. You could put those in the Q&A. Um, Let's see, do we have, okay, I see one here. It says, for the React framework, which is the difference with React, uh, with the React testing library? So it's going to be similar, but the difference is, is um, React testing library, you're just going to get a, a like a, a dot in your terminal that says this pass because you're going to run it with Jest or something like that. If you, if you do like React uh, testing library, we actually have a, a, a plugin that works with it. So the same naming, uh, like uh, get by cell or, or whatever, all the, whatever the, the specific selector names you like to use, uh, find by those types of things, you can use the same ones in Cypress and it, and it works the same, except for the main differences is you're actually getting these, uh, the, the, the component in the, in an actual browser. So you can validate you know, hey, this looks the way I expect it to. Uh, I can 
uh, and it's great when you're actually building your components because oftentimes we think about testing it after the fact as how do I test this thing? Uh, the great thing is that uh, you can actually write tests and, I, and uh, you know, I really recommend this if you can do it. Uh, and component testing really makes this as easy as possible um, to actually do this. So hopefully that answers your question, uh, Victor. Um, again, um, it's preference. I mean, if you if you like testing library, there's nothing wrong with it. We like it. And like I said, we have a plugin that integrates with it really, really well. Um, but at the end of the day, um, the, the visual part of actually running this in a browser, I think, is is a um, is a is a big plus. I think when it comes to um, actually um, running component tests. Let's see. Do we have any other questions? Uh, I can also show one other example while I'm doing this, if we want. Let's close this out. Uh, here's an example, and I just wrote an article about this recently as well. If anyone would like, I can uh, share that along. But here's a, an example of how you can create custom, basically, um, like, cause every application is different, right? Like I used some pretty trivial examples of, hey, creating a new app, uh, and a trivial example of a pretty basic uh, welcome type application. But like, say your application uses like uh, a Redux store or some state management or something like that. Well, I was gonna, this, um, this example I have actually um, uses NGRX. And those of you who are familiar with that, but basically, uh, it's like Redux for Angular, and this is an example in in uh, uh, Angular. So uh, let's open this up in IDE. Okay, so uh, this is just a stepper component. You can the other thing too, which uh, kind of going back to your question, Victor, is because this is in a browser, like I'm not bound to just the results of the test. I can actually go in here and and actually interact with the DOM and validate that it works as, as you know, it's just like having it in the browser, which I think is really, really cool. Um, but one of the things like, for example, if you're, let's actually open this folder so we can have the whole thing. Here. So for example, uh, this is like a stepper component and we have like a, a some actions, we have a reduce, we have an effect, we have reducer. Um, and we like, normally you would go about test this with like a unit test or something like that. And I'm not saying you you wouldn't want to do that, but one of the things um, I like about this is like, you can, um, let me look at, we have a, a the stepper component, we have, this component basically injects the store um, and it uses a selector to select the, the the count, which then is the thing that displays this value here, right there. Hopefully you can see that. And then um, we have public methods that increment, decrement, and clear the count. And those uh, are basically we're using just Angular's built-in binding to, to handle this sort of thing. Um, but normally we would maybe just write a unit test that says, Hey, spy on this spy on the dispatching of the store and make sure it was called when it's clicked or something like that, which is, which can be good. And, and I have some tests like this here. So we, we basically do a basic amount. We make sure that the default state is zero. We make sure that you can decrement the, uh, increment and decrement the count. So that way, Hey, when I click this, um, it's actually, it's it's not only dispatching the action, but the the then the action is getting reduced correctly in the store, and that the selector pulls it back out and renders it correctly into the DOM. So this is sort of the round trip of of the entire thing. Uh, normally, this sort of spy example uh, is how we would do this, like in a unit test, is where you would spy on basically a. Uh, like on this public method that says, hey, the component uh, increment method, I want to make sure that when I click this plus button, that that component has been, that method has been called. 
that's a way you can write tests like this, as well as decrim uh, the invocation of the decrement public method, so forth. Um, or you can spy on the store and say, uh, this store that we are going that we are injecting, this calls dispatch. So we can make sure that we can validate that the store gets dispatched. Um, but this is kind of a little verbose. So one of the things I wanted to uh, create is I create this example of how you could create your own custom commands. Um, so like if you have it, if your application uses a store a lot, you can basically create uh, something called custom commands. And you'll see here, I created a couple of them, which I have a store, which basically gets access to that, that, that store, which is actually, it's technically actually private in most cases, you would have it most cases, as well as a dispatch function. And so here you can just create custom commands that sort of do this sort of thing. Um, so here like is an example of, hey, I'm getting the component, I'm getting the store from the component and I'm wrapping it. So that way I had then have access to the store. I could then, uh, then pass that store to a dispatch function that then spies on that. So then what that looks like is in, you could write a test down here that's basically like, hey, mount this component. I wanna get the store called store and I wanna, I wanna call dispatch and then basically um, I wanna make sure that dispatch was called um, with one. So that way um, if this was like this, if I change this to two, this test will actually fail because it's expecting one to have been dispatched instead of two to have been dispatched. So you could see this is a way how you could create custom commands to do this, uh, to keep uh, basically to build like supportive functions that help making testing really, really easy. So that way it sort of enforces patterns and behaviors, good behaviors for your team so you can be consistent. Uh, okay, looks like we have a question from Alfredo. He says, I'm passionate about Cypress, but haven't yet experimented with component testing feature. My impression is that it allows for more intricate unit tests, which might be more suited for developers rather than quality engineers, especially if the latter doesn't always have access to the code. I'm curious about how the integration of component testing works with the team dynamic and if the potential benefits and drawbacks might be in adding additional layer of quality assurance. Alfredo, this is a fantastic question. Um, you did point out something that I haven't, um, that I failed to mention. Um, traditionally, end-to-end uh, -end tests with Cypress could be written by anyone. Um, they are written by developers in a lot of cases. They're written by um, quality, you know, quality assurance people in a lot of cases. Uh, component tests, though, it could be written by anyone. Uh, in most cases, we found that there are better they're, they fit better with someone like the actual developer who wrote them or design teams that maybe build design systems with has components that other people consume, that type of thing. Um, because component, like end-to-end -end test is, is completely decoupled from your framework and all those specifics. So you can run end-to-end, you can run end-to-end -end test in a separate project and point it to, uh, you know, anything you want. And, and it will work where component testing is basically it's, you know, you're going to install it next to the actual project itself. And it's going to then basically use because we want it to be tightly coupled with your application. So that way it uses the same, the same build process, the same webpack config, a uh, Vite config, basically all the ways your application run, you want it to run your tests the same way without having to create mocks of all those things. So that's so that is a, a key difference. Um, you certainly could write um, QA people could write that, but if you didn't have access to the code, um, <clears throat> it certainly would be less valuable. So I think that's a great, great, great point you mentioned. Sure. Excuse me. <clears throat> Anyone else have questions? <clears throat> Perfect. Yeah, so hopefully, hopefully this answered questions people have. Um, let me 
stop sharing and yeah hopefully uh yeah we have a few minutes for some time uh for some questions if people have them Jessica says, really good introduction to this. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica, for listening. Danny says, amazing. Danny would tell me it was amazing even if it wasn't amazing, but thanks, Danny. Thanks, Ronald, for uh, sending a couple of those, custom those links. That's always super helpful. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Perfect. Uh, I don't know how you, I, I'm going to butcher your name. I'm sorry. Mary Sl 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 Slide. -A? <laughs> I don't know how to say that. I'm sorry. Uh, just Marie. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she says, I, they say, I am a Cypress lover. Thanks a lot for the presentation. You are welcome. Thank you guys for being, uh, uh, supporters of Cypress and, uh, yes, a, a Cuban name. Ah, nice. I love it. Uh, Didier, I think that's how you say it. She says, uh, very useful functionality. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. It's, um, <clears throat> I I'm biased because I, you know, I helped build it and I work at Cypress, but it's something that, um, it's a tool that I use in my own projects. We use inside of Cypress and I absolutely love using it. Like, I think it, it makes the barrier to testing as, as small as I've ever seen it. And it, um, so you get all the benefits of, of, you know, of testing and writing tests is, you know, as painless as it could pretty much be. I don't know how you could make it any less pain, pain, any less pain, painless. I don't know how it could be any more painless. I don't know how to say that. That's, that's, that's a weird way to say that. So do I plan on giving a second session? Uh, I certainly could, Jessica. Um, yeah, so uh, we have... Uh, Danny says, yes, I do plan. So I guess Danny agreed that I will be doing a second session. Uh, but no, I have... Um, I do have a second session that goes a little further in detail. I also have... Um, I can send a link to or an example sort of workshop that I work through if those of you want to sort of deep dive into it. But I will say... Uh, the other thing that if you're using end-to-end -end tests already, the the great benefit of using component testing is that you're using the same API. You're not change. You don't have to like learn something new. You're just the only thing different is instead of visiting a URL, you're just mounting a component, and the rest of the API is the exact same. So, in terms of uh, getting started, I would just say encourage you if you haven't done it, just get started. Uh, I think you'll find it super, super easy. If not, reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer questions that you have. But uh, but yes, uh, Biviani, Biviana, I think that's maybe how you say it, uh, says thanks for the presentation. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. That's been a, it's been a lot of fun time. Anka, Anka, I think I say it. Thank you very much. All the info is clear. Hope to work with this tool soon. Love to see that, Anka. I think uh, I think you'll like it. Uh, I mean, maybe you won't, but I'm pretty sure. Like, I get a lot of people that are like, "This is amazing." So I I, th I think I think you're gonna like it. Uh, Didier again says, "Is there any requirement from the app to be tested that should be necessary? For example, a pattern applied or something like that?" No, that's the great thing is um, it'll work on pretty much any framework and it doesn't matter um really what like how what patterns you're using or something like that um it's just going to use the same uh runtime configuration that your application would use um for example in in um say angular if you're familiar with that um you have the concept of like a uh its compiler reads like information either from a module or from 
your component declaration and it will then like ch children component or services or things like that that need to be imported, declared or provided, things like that. Um, if you're not using standalone components, you would have to manually declare those things um, or something like React if, you're, if a component depended upon a hook instead of uh, something like, or a, uh, a context. And so you could use something like uh, instead of mounting the component, you would mount the context and then put the, because it's just JSX, you would put the component inside of it. So it's really composable. And again, if you have like a big part of your React project that uses a context for a lot of parts, you could create a custom mount that automatically does that. So it makes the mounting even simpler. So that's one of the things I like. Um, I was kind of shown with that store example is you could create um, high level um, mounts for uh you know or configurations to deal with parts of your application so super cool uh let's see uh viviana says would the, be the would be the focus more towards front end components yeah so i mean uh this is uh cypress runs in javascript and the the idea of component testing is is not for like back end like if you're using like blazor or some type of like um, server side component necessarily, but it's really it's for JavaScript components. So our framework. So like I said, we we support React, Angular, uh, Vue, and Svelte out of the box. Um, and then we have a third party um, frameworks that Ronald had put a link in earlier that we have for for other front end frameworks like. Uh, uh, quick solid JS, stencil JS, and 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 other frameworks as well. So, uh, yes, the the focus is on definitely on front end components. And so, if you are working in the front end regularly, I highly recommend uh, taking a look at component testing because I think you will find it to be very very great way to test your applications. Perfect. Looks like we have, are almost up. Have a couple, like one minute, two minutes, something like that. Uh, any last minute questions? 